Okay. <clears throat> right. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second virtual traffic and road safety advisory panel meeting. <clears throat> Present are members and officers and advisors of the panel and council officers. Also present are invited members of the public who will be uh, addressing the meeting. Additional, additionally, councillors uh, may also be present. Uh, before we start the meeting agenda, I will go through the published protocols and I'll also clarify the uh, agenda uh, 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 <coughs> arrangements because they have uh, changed slightly. OK, so can I firstly refer members and officers to the published protocols for holding virtual meetings? And could you please note the following? Uh, members of the panel should ensure they have their videos on at all times, but to put microphones on mute unless speaking. Other members, advisors and officers should switch off uh, their videos and put microphones on mute until they are, are invited to speak. <clears throat> In case of a technical problem, the meeting will adjourn until the issue is uh, resolved. If the technical problem persists and the meeting is in for it, the members of the meeting will be abandoned and rearranged for a later date. <coughs> the meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be available to watch or listen to on the website. <clears throat> Regarding the agenda on item eight, there will be two deputations, one from Healthy Street from Harrow and the other one from Mr. Ian Mandel on parking barriers on Honeypot Lane. As, the, as these deputations refer to item 10 on the agenda, transportation schemes, review of permit development and implementation procedure, and also item 11, information report, parking and street space program update 2020-21. These will be taken following uh, the declaration. So, the final item on the agenda for tonight will be item nine, which is the information report on uh, <coughs> on <coughs> petitions. OK, is that clear to everyone? Um, okay. Chair. Yes, I'm John. Uh, hello, Chair. Uh, thank you. Can I actually just um, come in here and say um, if we can please, I would like to propose to suspend the standing order uh, 49 so that uh, our residents can have an opportunity to ask the questions because it wasn't very clear um, uh, because we were saying uh, uh, two days and then gave the date as a 13th so uh, residents were not able to uh, put in their questions so I think at least we could do is give them an opportunity to speak at this meeting and I think um, for that if we can suspend uh, standing order so that Mr. Um, uh, Kaza, Mr. Kazas can speak and also um, uh, uh, Mrs. Balabi can speak as well because she uh, also missed uh, the deadline on the 13th. Missed the, they missed the deadline. I've spoken by phone to Mr. Kaza already and we've agreed that he'll, he'll put his uh, petition to the next meeting of, of TARSEP and uh, I have uh, noted that I will speak to the officers about uh, Dennis Lane uh, and also I think Councillor Ashton is going to is back benching tonight and she will she will be speaking on the de de Dennis Lane as well. But can we just take the vote please if you don't mind? Yes. Um, we can just take the vote because I'm proposing to um, uh, 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 suspend this uh, standing order um, so that uh, they can ask right. questions because there's also uh, Mrs. Golabi. Uh, how many people do you, do you want to ask questions? <laughs> well, there is no limit to it, as uh, Miss, Miss, Mr. Kaza uh, yeah, uh, as well as Mr. Golabi, because Marilyn is actually no. backbenching. It's not. It's yeah. not. Uh, 
it's obviously uh -huh. coming from the residents. This is we, we are serving our residents, and this is more very no, important. Well, it's the residents well, that you actually speak up. I missed the deadline. I've already spoken to one of them. I mean, you can have a vote if you wish. Uh, that chair. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt, Chairman, but I've spoken to him and he was not very pleased with what you said. All right. And not sorry. only that, the item is on the agenda, agenda. So I think it is important um, that we actually uh, let the residents speak. At least you can, we can do as councillors is give them opportunity to speak. We are the. So, okay, how, how many residents want to talk? Just just clearly, who's who's missed it? Who who wants to talk? Mr. Kaza is going to speak on Dennis Lane. So there's one person. No, and, and, and obviously Mr. Mandel is going to speak, and there's Mrs. Uh, Galavi who will be speaking, well, uh, who will ask the question as well. Now. She's presenting a petition. So there's three people you want to speak. Yes, it's not like I'm not asking about tens of thousands of people asking questions. OK, so there's three people to speak. What time limits are we looking at each person? Well, if a deputation lasts about 20 minutes. So Mr Mandel is already speaking. We've got uh, Healthy Harrow uh, will, will, be, will be speaking. And if you want a third person, that's about an hour. I don't see any problem with that yeah, and it's not a very large agenda either. Can I, to, can I come into this? If the chair yeah. has spoken to these individuals and they have missed the deadline and the chair has agreed with them, they would come to the next meeting and speak at the next meeting. I don't see what the problem is. The problem is not nothing to do with you um, because as, I, as far as I'm concerned, I only, only ask us asked for a vote. Well, so if you don't want to, don't, that is fine. It is up to you, okay. but we have already made it very clear uh, that the person is not happy with what the chair has said. So please just take the vote. If you're, if I don't want any any more comments, uh, like um, yeah. like I have just heard. If you can, please, uh, chairman. If I can request yeah. you, chairman, to take yeah. the vote, please. We can have the. Uh, I think John wants to come in first. John. I was just expressing surprise that you are unwilling to allow residents their democratic opportunity just for. Mm -hmm. Of a technicality which is in itself shrouded in a in a bit of confusion no, and I'm happy that you're going to go ahead with it. I think I find they, it surprising yeah. um, if you I've, I've already offered that they can come to the next task Thank meeting. Which is but but the next to task that meeting sir Mr Chairman with due respect is in six months time and it's, uh, that's it's, whole it's, it's, it's about three and a half months. Does that matter? It's in March, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's five months. October. <laughs> right. So, do you want to? You, you can have a vote at that year. Can you read through the uh, councillors attending and whether that uh, they, though, if if they vote for, it will be to take the additional people. If they vote against, they don't want additional people speaking tonight. Gotcha. Ch Chair, can I clarify in terms of suspension? Uh, suspension may may be by motion with or without notice if at least one half of all members of the panel are present, which is the case. And where such a motion is carried by a majority of those present. Uh, OK. Right. So what does that mean? What does that mean? You've got to have the majority of members in okay. favour. Right. Yeah? But Mr Chairman, so no. have you not already agreed that uh, these people could speak? No. I thought you had. No. Sorry, Daksha, could you make that clear? It's not clear. Basically, you need to take a vote and the majority will uh, obviously proceed along those lines. Exactly. So we have to put it to vote. Thank you. Yes. And yeah. if, it, if this vote can be recorded, please, Daksha. Chair. Sorry, yeah. I will do so, a councillor. Can I just say, uh, in terms of the questioners, we have six questioners. And those questions were submitted on time. Many questions and 
was not submitted and the residents were given the wrong advice. I don't know who gave that advice. It wasn't me, but the deadline for questions was 3 p.m. on the 8th of October. Uh, and deadline for deputations was 8th of October, 5 p.m. There are a number of speakers tonight, deputies, petitioners and questioners. I will leave you to take the vote now. Thank you. All right. Can I just clarify, though, we've got six public questions tonight already. We have two deputations, including Mr. Mandel. We have one petition. OK, so that works where we are at the moment. Uh, thanks, Ed. Can you go through the list of members? Um, they are about four to support ad additional speakers or against. Yeah. OK, first of all, Chair, yeah. I'm Karim. I'm uh, reserving for David Perry. Yeah. Okay. I'm a reserve member. Thank you, yes. Councillor. I'm going to start with um, Councillor Paymana Assad. OK, so my initial reaction to this would be to vote against, um, but because they missed the deadline. And I think that if the chair specifically stated that they could come to the next meeting and have their fair go, then that's how it should be. It's not fair if other people also miss the deadline and we're making exceptions for specific individuals and specific constituents. So I vote against. May I express shame on Councillor? Hey, Mana, for that attitude. We're What's just wrong with democracy? John, John, we're just going through the vote. Councillor Lee. Uh, uh, um, I'm being pushed for time, so I'm going to have to go with. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the actual wording over here. This question should be submitted in writing by 3 p.m. at least two clear working days before the day of the relevant meeting. So we're on day Tuesday, which is October. So one clear day would be Monday. And the second clear day would be Friday. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Is that, is that correct? Well, that, that's. So, sorry, Chair, it's two clear working days before the day of the meeting and the clear working days, it, uh, the deadline was Thursday at 3 p.m. Thank you. Yeah, OK, I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, just on the basis of that, those are the. Um, <coughs> the rules which have been set on the council website, um, I'll, yeah. I'll vote against it, but right. I would okay. say that I am open for having a motion on if later on if something does come relevant and we do need a member of the public to add extra information to whatever might come up, I'm happy to vote in for, favour of that if need be. Um, right. I know there's a number of right. deputations right. and questions right. coming up. Right. Uh, OK, right. Councillor John Hinckley. I vote for. Right. Amit Jogia. I would like to vote, vote for. And I'd like to make the point that um, whilst the agenda has been very clear, the advice on the Harrow Council website is um, open to interpretation. It says two clear working days, which many would interpret as Friday. So going forward, I would advise um, the Council to make it much clearer, maybe just to state a date and a time rather than um, stating two days, which is um, quite um, difficult to make can be misleading. Chair, can I? Uh, it's Elaine McEachron, Democratic yeah. Services. I'm, I, I think there might be some confusion with regard to the deadlines. There are two different deadlines for this case. Public questions must be received five clear working days before the meeting. The deadline for public questions was Monday, Monday the 8th. In terms of deputations, this is what I wish is that I'm assuming you're you're speaking Monday about. Monday is now. not the end. That's two. Monday. Sorry, Monday. it's Thursday the eighth. Oh, I think yeah, there was. Some... Is it Monday or Thursday? Thursday. Thursday, Thursday the eighth. Thursday the eighth. Apologies. Um, okay. So yeah, that I think there was some. There clearly there's some confusion with regard to the the deadlines. Apologies there. 
Right, can we continue with the voting, please? <coughs> OK, our Councillor Anjana Patel. Thank you. I just cannot understand. We are only asking for one or two more uh, people check? to ask I'll questions. Just... Not only that, if we are confused ourselves, what do you expect the residents to do? I mean, come yeah. on, some compassion towards our can residents. You, Obviously, you... voting for asking, right. voting for Thank letting you. the Thank residents you, ask Thank the question. You. Right. Sorry, Councillor Patel, your vote. I am for... voting to ask, let residents ask the question, suspending the order. Mm -hmm. Councillor Marika. Of course, uh, I'm going to say that we as council, we, it looks confused, deputation and giving uh, the dates, the time. So I would like if the chair can have a leverage and make the questions, well, not for tw tw 20 minutes, uh, to, to take a much more lesser minutes and re reduce the minutes hours to ask the question. If you can do a leverage, but looking at the uh, council website and publication of uh, deputation and the questioning should be on these days as being a confusion, I would ask chair to reconsider and give a bit of a time after three months to go back to a task at meeting again is a long wait. Sorry, okay. Councillor, are you voting for the motion or against the motion? Uh, uh, I have to go with my team, but my view is that. OK, so I is that against the motion? Yes. Sorry, yeah. Councillor, is that against the motion? Yes. yes. Thank you. Councillor Miles. Yeah. Um, <coughs> against the motion. So the motion is lost. Thank you. Right. OK. Can I just clarify Shame. that they can bring it to the next meeting of TASA and which is in six months' time October, November, December, six. January, February, March. Right. Months. And the officers will contact everybody who sent in a, a late application, whether by email or that they wanted to speak. Okay. Right. Can we carry on then? <clears throat> Right, so I think I got to the end of my introduction. So we're on to reserve members. Um, reserve members. Karima, you're a reserve member, right? Yeah, I'm a reserve member. I repeat, listen. Yeah, yeah, so you're reserving for Councillor David Perry, yeah? Right. Declarations of interest are being published and taken as read, I think. Yeah. Right. Um, the third one, we can have another vote, I guess, uh, is the appointment of vice chair. I have uh, David Perry can't come to the meeting, but he, he has indicated he would like to remain as vice chair. So I'd like to no nominate David Perry as vice chair of, of TARSA. Um, Sorry, Chair, any nominations will need to be seconded. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second that nomination. Uh, Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other nominations? John. I would like to nominate Councillor Joggia. Yeah, um, is, that, is that second? I presume, man, Joe, on a... I second it. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. All right, OK, so we can OK, could that, could we, we need to put um, the vote. Right, OK, can we, can we have a, a vote then on who will be vice chair of Thomas or for what, what re, remains of this uh, <laughs> council? Yeah, right. OK, go on, Dacia, let's do it again. <laughs> Councillor Assad. I'd like to vote for David Perry. James Lee. Voting for David Perry. John Hinckley. Voting for Amy Joggia. Councillor Joggia. I'd like to vote for myself, please. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Patel. I'll be voting for Councillor Joggia, please. Councillor Marika. I'm voting for Councillor David Perry. Councillor Miles. 
Yeah, I'm voting for da 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 David Perry as well. So. Thank you. David Perry has been selected as the vice chair. Thank you. Well, I thank you very much. Although he's not here, I'm sure he'll be delighted with that. Right, OK, thank you for that. Uh, so can we move on to appointment of advisors, which was deferred from the last meeting? Uh, I think we have four advisors who uh, I, I hope attended this meeting. We have uh, Tony Wood from the Harrow Public Transport uh, Users Association and uh, and a uh, child from the Harrow Cycling uh, Organisation, Nigel Long from the Harrow Association for People uh, D Disabled People, and Jeremy Leach, who's from London Living Streets. So, can the panel agree that what they will be our advisors for the rest of 2020-21? Is that okay? Agreed. Yes. Yes. Good. Agreed. Okay. Right, uh, the minutes uh, is the next item. Can we uh, agree the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the 5th of February? And also the special meeting of the 10th of August uh, with a, a, a correction that has been circulated to members. Uh, is, that, is that agreed, everybody? Yes. Yes, good. All right, OK. Um, right. Um, if that's OK, then we'll move on to public questions. Um, we have six public questions and uh, we normally allow 15 minutes for these questions. Um, I think three of the questions relate to all too close. Uh, and, but we'll, we'll see if, if we can uh, and also people that have that will ask the question, I will uh, give a reply and they have the opportunity if they wish to answer and to ask a supplementary question uh, as well. But as, as I say, we have 50 minutes uh, for this uh, uh, public public questions. So the first public question I've got is from John Marchant. Uh, John Marchant, are you are you there? Hello. Is uh, he? Can you hear me? Yeah. Is that, is that, is that John Marchant? See you and hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay, John. Carry on. So good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask this question. Given the dangerous and chaotic traffic problems in Pangbourne Drive and Dalkeith Grove, could the low neighbourhood scheme kindly be considered by the panel for these roads? Right. So thank you very much for your question, John. Uh, my reply as follows. As you may be aware, Transport for London has secured funding for delivering the London Streets Space programme to develop a programme of, of experimental measures to, su to support module shift during the current pandemic. This included low traffic neighbourhoods. Uh, right, the funding was subsequently provided for delivering the measures quickly to meet the demands of the health emergency. And the funding covered the um, the period up to the end of September 2020. No additional funding has been forthcoming from Transport for London for any new schemes as part of this programme. However, we will keep your request under review and when our normal funding programme return, we can have consideration to taking forward a scheme. Yeah, have you got a supplementary question at all, John? Only that if that if, if anything else can be done just to yeah. help the, the the problems in those two roads, speeding cars and traffic yeah. jams every morning, and no one okay. keeps the twenty mile yeah. speed limit. And okay. Yeah. okay. Well, uh, uh, as I said, in, in my reply, there is, there's no more funding for the streets by scheme, but hopefully next year we'll get. Uh, uh, some more funding from our, our, our normal programmes, and then we'll, we'll, we'll work with the officers to de develop a scheme for 
Painbourne Painbourne Drive and Dalkeith Grove. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Right. Uh, the second question is from Alan Cohen on Alton Close. Alton, is he, is he around? No. Um, Chair, I am expecting uh, Mr. Cohen to come. Um, Andre, is he is he so waiting in the lobby? He's in the meeting at the moment. He's just okay, on. Thank you. Mr. Cohen, would you ask your question, please? Thank you. Um, is, it, is it there? Yes, Chair, he's in the meeting. Unfortunately, he's just not responding. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, so, so we hold on to that then, and we, we can we can try and come back to that question if it's uh, if he manages to get through. Yeah. Um, Shall we move on to the next uh, item, which is uh, also on Orchard Grove? It's Michael Kleiman. Is he going to be att attending tonight? Chair, I was advised by him that due to work commitments, he could not attend, and I would suggest a written reply be sent to him. Thank you. Right, yeah, then. Right. Right, OK. Right, so let's move on to uh, the fourth um, public question from Hugh Brown. Hugh. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you. Yes, it's good to, to speak with you again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the camera should be on as well, hopefully. Yeah. Yes, that's sure. Right. Right, okay, so, right. I'll ask your question, please. TARSAT previously made a recommendation to proceed with the St John Fisher 20 mile per hour zone, which included the information of the speed level at the junction of Melrose Road and Kingsley Road. In the reports pack of the TARSAT meeting on 28th of November 2017, it was stated that the CALP no longer installs full width round top hump and that instead we use a combination of speed platforms or speed cushions, both of which are designed in accordance with department transport guidelines. Assuming the guidelines reference is London Transport Note 107, which is published in March 2007 and is published on the gov.uk website, this guidance states, and I quote, paragraph 2.12.1, before implementing any new traffic coming scheme, the full impact should be evaluated. The other main area is environmental impact. It goes on paragraph 2.12.2. Environmental impacts can cover a range of areas, including drainage. It also states in paragraph 4.2.5 that curb to curb speed humps will require additional drainage. I live adjacent to the speed table at the junction of Melrose Road and Kingsley Road and have reported multiple instances of surface water flooding of mine and my neighbour's properties. This occurs when heavy rain exceeds the capacity of the carriageway drainage, causing surface water to flow over the pavements and onto residential properties, flooding our front gardens and entering our houses through the air bricks. Prior to this meeting, I have shared videos showing surface water flooding in 2015, which is before the speed table was installed, showing water flowing down the carriageway, and in August this year, after the speed table was installed, showing water flooding our properties. The difference between these two videos is stark, and I would hope it's obvious to members of this panel and any reasonable person that the speed table is obstructing the flow of water and directing it onto our properties. This is not a maintenance issue. This is a concern about the recommendation made by this panel 
and whether sufficient consideration was given to mitigating the drainage and flooding risks. Given the evidence of flooding presented in the videos, which appears to be caused by a scheme recommended by this panel, I ask that this panel now recommends a review, which would report back to TARSAP to determine the effect of this view table on surface water and what design alterations would be needed to mitigate. All right, OK, thanks very much, uh, Hugh. Um, I'll, I'll write my, give my reply. Uh, just to say, I think your um, videos were circulated to members uh, prior to the meeting, so that they all had the opportunity to look at your uh, videos uh, about the, the flooding. OK, right. I'm afraid my reply is a bit long. But <laughs> right. As part of the Council's local implementation plan, LIP, funding was secured to implement a 20 mile per hour zone around St John Fisher Catholic Primary School on 2017-2018. The proposal included a raised speed table at the junction of Melrose Road and Kingsley Road and four new draining gullies which were included within the design. A further gully was subsequently introduced outside 17 Melrose Road in 2018 following ponding issues, which I presume means Every rain. Right? Um, following the concerns raised regarding flooding, the council flood risk engineer uh, carried out an investigation and concluded that adequate road gullies are provided, and the flooding was a result of the lack of capacity of Thames Water Public Service Water Sewer, which is PSWS for short which is not the responsibility of the council to resolve. It was also noted that Melrose Road at the entrance of the school had flooded in the past prior to the installation of the raised fee table. <coughs> Together with the advice provided to the residents, including the reporting of flooding events at Thames Water, the council has requested Thames Water undertake a line uh, uh, clean and CCTV survey on that pub public uh, service water sewer. The draining team has also inspected the, the uh, outfall to ensure there it, it, it is no blockage, during which it was noted that the out, outlet side uh, diameter, sorry, the outset pipe diameter appear to be relatively small, which could cause throttling during heavy rain. This information has been relayed to Thames Water. Um, uh, yeah, so that's a reply. Do, do you have a supplementary question, Hugh, at all? Um, yes, I do. Um, firstly, I can give an update that Thames Water actually completed their CCTV inspection yesterday. And that they found that there were no blockages. The sewer was found to be um, completely clear. Um, so obviously, there's always the risk that high intensity rain or overflow um, exceed the capacity of the sewers. Our concern yeah. is the speed table might not be the underlying cause, but it is the reason the flooding is in our properties. Um, your response doesn't really address the fact that prior to the speed table, as seen in the videos, when we had this excess flooding, water would flow down the carriageway, whereas yeah. since the speed table is installed, it flows onto our properties, and it is only around the speed table that this problem occurs. So I would ask uh, that this panel, um, and I hope other members have seen the videos, um, to consider recommending that a review takes place um, as clearly the sewer is clear and the drainage gullies are clear. There is only one other thing that it could be, and that is the speed table, which is very clear from the video. So I ask, please, could you recommend uh, that uh, this is reviewed? OK, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're still awaiting an official report from Thames Water, which we uh, hasn't been received yet. And following that, there will be an assessment by our flood risk engineer as well. But are you, are you suggesting a further, this is referred to the next meeting of TARSAC? 
Yeah. Is that right? Um, I'd like the panel to recommend that um, speed tail is considered as a potential cause for the flooding, uh, assuming the sewer and the gullies are ruled out, which they appear to have been done. And I'm sure Thames Waters report will convey what I've conveyed tonight. OK, well, I, I can share with the panel. I mean, uh, the, the panel uh, uh, agree with that. We take a further look at the table water. Because I, I presume you've, you've all seen the videos from Mr. Brown. John. May I say, Chair, that really this is not a matter for TASAT. This is a drainage issue. And we have some very qualified people who can actually sort out Thames water. Many of us in our wards have had flooding problems, which are almost as serious as, um, uh, you know, this residence, and they have been sorted out. So why don't we give it to the uh, infrastructure team who are very expert in Harrow and just let them get on with it? Yeah. And well, uh, Mr. Brown can go back to his local councillors, Janet Moat, uh, Chris yeah. Baxter, <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure that they will keep the infrastructure team up to speed. All right. Well, I think my initial reaction was it was an amazing issue, but the question was accepted uh, as one of our public questions. Uh, so you're suggesting it's being uh, referred back to the in infrastructure team and the local councillors. Is that is that right? Yes, indeed. Okay. okay. Right. Is there any other comments or? And uh, as I said, the the. The response from Thames Water will be assessed by our flood risk engineer as well. So, is that agreeable, team? I, yes, I would agree to that. I would okay. agree to that, especially whenever we are considering a planning application. This is something that is always considered, and our officers are very up um, with it. That if it's a flooding area, they are very conscious about uh, doing a development. So, I think. They will be able to um, answer no, to the question okay, right. we have been asked okay. here. Thank you. Okay. Can I thank the panel for that? And yeah. thank Can you I? For Sorry. If, if, Jerry, uh, saying that I totally agree with uh, uh, John because it happens in South Harrow too, in certain area like East Coast Lane. It's the similar factor, and I think it should go back and it should be looked at. I think that's a good de decision. It should okay. be widely. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. It's not right. been resolved in the year since that it's been reported. Really? It was reported a year ago and it's okay. not been resolved. Okay. Right. Well, I have faith, we'll leave, Mr. Brown. We'll, we'll leave it all with our uh, flood engineer and the infrastructure team. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Hugh, for uh, asking the question this evening. Um, I think we've still got uh, Thatcher. Are we, are we still within 15 minutes at the moment? Back, Chair. Sorry, Chair, I need to revert to my colleague um, Elaine McCacron in the, uh, on the thing, but you need to go back to question two as well. Yeah, uh, are we still within the 15 minutes though? Uh, given that there was a slight delay, Chair, in trying to get Mr Cohen in and a number of members have spoken, we've got about another two or three minutes. All right. Well, I'm willing to do extend it beyond the 15 minutes just to make sure we go through get all the questions. So, um, shall we go back to? Is Mr. Cohen available yet? Yeah, uh, available. Hi, good evening. Alan, good stuff. Right. Do you want to present your question on or to close, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, as a resident of uh, Orchard Close, I'm at number 14. I'm writing yeah. to request that the pavement parking be allowed due to the fact that the road is too narrow to allow large delivery, service, and emergency vehicles to pass. Daddy, One uh, second. Uh, I got, um, well, what, 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 what if we uh, build a new garage? Um, all 14 houses in the Close are in agreement that this is wanted. Um, I've actually sent you a few pictures to highlight the issue. Um, picture one shows the bin lorry that can't pass. Uh, picture three shows the road with no cars parked outside and how much space there is or lack of. 
and picture four to six shows a neighbor's car uh, which has been da damaged by a bin lorry that was um, um, going past. Right, okay. All right, thank you, Alan. Um, so I'll, I'll give my uh, uh, reply to that. Uh, in London, there is legislation in force um, that prohibits all parking on footways and verges created by the Greater London Council under the General Powers Act 1974. Uh, the carriageway in Orchard Close is not wide enough to physically accommodate uh, vehicles parking on street without causing extreme difficulty for large vehicles to gain access and um, maneuverability, uh, such as uh, for emergency service vehicles. Additionally, the footways are already at a minimal width to facilitate pedestrian movement um, and so a footway parking scheme would not be possible as a uh, vehicle parking on the footway would reduce width for pedestrians to a substandard um, <coughs> sub setting and uh, would uh, had a serious impact on vulnerable road users. Um, uh, road users do have a, a responsibility to respect parking restrictions and park appropriately and, and the council also has a responsibility uh, to ensure that it restrictions, to enforce instructions uh, in the public interest. Uh, the council is currently reviewing footway uh, uh, parking issues um, across the borough with, with a view to um, uh, taking further action in the next financial year. OK, so do you have a, a supplementary question, Alan, at all? Alan? Um. I wanted to ask, does the council have a responsibility um, to make sure emergency vehicles can get to uh, properties um, mm. safely? Because currently it's not safe within our road. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, as I said, I, I think um, Orchard Close is a unusual design <laughs> for a road. And as I said in my reply, we appreciate there are problems with on-street parking and footway parking as well, but we will include all too close when we um, hopefully um, do our footway parking review, which we are hoping will be done within the next financial year, and hopefully we're going to re re resolving the e issues that exist in all too close at, at the present time. Right. OK, is that, is that OK? Right, great, thank you. Um, so where are we now? Um, Chair, question five now. Yeah, that's from, that's also on Orchard Close. Uh, is the gen gen gentleman here at all? Mm. Chair, the I've gentleman did, did not reply to me to, to tell me if he was attending or not. Um, on the base, uh, he did get receive an invitation. So on the basis yeah. that he's not present at the meeting, I would suggest a written reply. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Chair. I see a hand raised, and yeah. he is here. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, the only thing is, I've got the same reply to that as to question number two. But um, anyway, <laughs> if he wants to put put his question. No. He, sorry, Chair, he's here. Right. Um, Mr. Yeah. Procupy, are you able to ask your question? No. Okay, well, if, I mean, 
I'll, it'll be the same reply I, I just gave anyway. So, I mean, shall we move on to number six? Sorry, Chair, I'm sorry to, but he's he keeps on raising his hand. Andre, are you able to help, please? Thank you. Sorry, Daksha, unfortunately, it's on on the gentleman's side. He's, he just is unmute himself and speak. Alternatively, you can dial in. Right. OK, um, well, can we take the last question then? Um, which is from Gov Thomas MP. I bet he's not here, is he? Chair, I was expecting um, the MP to be present at the meeting. But he's not, is he? Not that I can see from the list. Right. OK, well, I, I, I'll send him a written reply. It's about a road uh, in my ward anyway, which I, I've spoken to him and the residents about uh, quite a few times. So if he send a written reply, um, it, can we go back? So the only one now is item five. Is, is yes, Jack, visit? question five. Uh, Andre, could you check if he's able to get in? I presume not. Again, sorry, Dasha. Unfortunately, if there's an issue, it's on his side. He's already in the meeting. He just needs to speak. Alternatively, he can dial in if he needs to. All right. Well, I mean, can we? Can I suggest we move on? Then I mean, it's it's on all too close. Um, I've already given a reply uh, to that, so I think we're all, all aware of the issues there. So. Uh, I think that concludes the public questions, yes? Yes, Chair, thank you. All right, OK, right, good. So um, that's the public questions. Then um, can we move on to item seven, which is the petition? Um, I've got one. Can I first? Can I ask first of all, are there other councillors who wish to submit a, a, a petition to the meeting at all? No, good, all right. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to submit the petition? Yes, I am. No, I, My name is Maria Bola, I have a petition. No, I'll, I'll just can, yeah, all right. So there's nobody else. So Maria, you you have a petition that you you put into the meeting, yeah. That's correct. You are okay. You have, you, have, you, have, you have one minute to put forward your uh, petition to the meeting. Okay. Good evening. My name is Maria Golabi, and I've been a resident of Grafton Road for over thirty years and I cycle each day to work. I first found out that there were going to be road closures when a leaflet came through my door for the first week of September. I soon found out that most of my neighbours did not know about this and were not happy when I showed them the leaflet. Even though there is an online petition, a national online petition, I decided to go around to hold my own petition to raise their awareness. They all were explaining to me how these closures would affect them. For instance, an elderly lady who lives off Blenheim Road told me that her delivery man had said she cannot be making delivery, her weekly groceries delivery due to it being too much time and too difficult for him to get to her. I could have had a lot more signatures had my dog not been attacked on the last morning and I spent most of the day at the vet at Pinner Road. But I would have not been able to get there in time if these closures had been in place. My dog would have bled to death. This could have happened to a sick child or an adult who needs to go to hospital in a hurry. We would like to have some transparency as well of how many residents were in favour of these closures. And was it really such a good idea to try this during the winter months of a pandemic? Ms. Golabi, could you read out the terms of your petition, please? Thank you. Right, one moment, I just need to get it in front of me. OK, so on the terms of the following persons are requesting the Traffic and Road Safety Advisory Panel to cancel the proposed closures between Pinner View and Kingsford Avenue and the closure between Beresford Road and Cunningham Park. We suggest you look into creating a one way system or an implementation with barriers that would recognise our, our local 
uh, uh, car um, reg details registration, like they have in Northolt and are doing now in Ealing, and implement a 20 mile zone. Now, I can tell you now, since they've been starting these berries on Friday afternoon, the 20 mile zone is completely wasted of time because all the cars are so agitated, they're just speeding around the neighborhood and they're all rats catch into one way in and one way out. And it's an absolute dangerous situation. And I think it's time that you need to come and have a look on, on an afternoon when the children come out of school, what it looks like. I have got two clips that I can ask you to um, pass on to the councillors that will show you that a normal road like Bolton Road that was not built to have that amount of traffic has suddenly become clogged up with traffic trying to get to Harrowview but nobody can get into Harrowview because Harrowview is completely clogged up too. Headstone Lane was also impossible to get into so I think you really need to have a look what it's doing to our neighbourhood. Right okay thank you Maria. Um, can I ask the panel to receive the petition? We will refer it to the Corporate Director of Com Community for consideration. Um, I, I think we also, um, when it first came to the TASAP in August, we it was uh, delayed um, and we spoke to the councillors of Headstones South and had a further consultation and we, we it, it seems what the scheme has only just gone in but it seems to have the support of the councillors and the majority of local residents but it will be can i finish please it, it will sure. be on a monthly basis so if there are problems that local residents have identified, then we we will be happy to look at, at, at this scheme uh, at, at a second time. Could I Try please answer to, to that? Because if you look at the local email address that we've been given, of the 400 people that have left their complaints, only 15 were for, 400 were against. And if you look yeah. at the national one, that is one minute, please. If you look at the national one that is going on at the moment, we are now on the third place of residents being against this and there are more than 700 signatures on that petition. So I really think you need to rethink this and very fast because these winter months are a dangerous time for us to be stuck in one way in, in these systems okay. where we cannot be in or out. Well, uh, I think our commonplace uh, portal gave the indication more more rest supported the uh, bullet. We would like again. some we would like some transparency but, on that, please. Can we have some transparency on that? Because we have not told how many are actually for. But, and unfortunately, but, it looks like most of these councillors are actually not living in our neighbourhoods, and we're the one who's paying the council tax and are really needing to live here. And I've lived here thirty years happily, but this is a nightmare. Well, as I say, it will be reviewed on a monthly basis and uh, if uh, residents ident identify some issues, we will we'll look at the, the scheme again. OK, Jerry, Jerry, oh, Jerry you want, you want us to pass on you our, our, what has happened here. I really hope that no one will die in the meantime because the emergency, the emergency vehicles do not get to our houses in time. I really hope that it will be on all of your conscience. Okay, right. Thank you very much for Jerry. I, Jerry, your, your Jerry I'm Karima. Uh, I just Karima. want to know that I have to declare my interest because Westerra Ward, my ward, as this uh, scheme goes through Westerra Ward too. So I don't know whether I have to declare interest. No, okay, right. Thank you. We okay. Right. Then. right. Okay. okay. Um, I think that was the one. Uh, uh, what was that? Petition. <laughs> right, OK, so we're now moving on to uh, item eight on the agenda, which is uh, deputations. As I said earlier in the meeting, we have two deputations tonight, one from Healthy Streets for Harrow, and the second one is from Mr Ian Mandel on parking, parking barriers at Hanford Lane. So if I can ask the Healthy Street uh, 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 people representing Healthy Streets for Harrow, uh, just before we start, you can have 
up to 10 minutes to speak. You don't have to take 10 minutes, but you can take up to 10 minutes. And then there are 10 minutes uh, for questions uh, uh, after you, you, you've spoken. But uh, I would say to uh, members, we still have quite a lot, a lot of um, issue to get through tonight. So if you can keep your questions fairly brief and to the point, if you have any questions after the presentation. Right, Veronica, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Chair, um, and everybody present, good to see you. I represent Harrow Cyclists and our campaign Healthy Streets for Harrow. My name is Veronica Chamberlain. I'm a British cycling ride leader for women. Um, I'd like to say we hear a lot of fine words from this panel about the importance of walking and cycling, but I would suggest to you that this emperor has no clothes. So I'm joined tonight by Emma Bradley, who's a resident of Headstone South, and Tara Furlong, who's a governor of Roxeth Primary School and cycles regularly in Harrow. So Emma will speak to us first, followed by Tara, and then I shall wind up. So I'd now like to hand over to Emma Bradley, please. Thank you very much, Veronica. My name is Emma and I'm a Headstone South resident. In early 2019, I delivered a 450 signature petition to Harrow Council, which called for Headstone South to become a low traffic neighbourhood. It now looks like I'm a little bit of a trendsetter considering one of the questions asked earlier was actually requesting a new LTN. So why did I, and indeed do I, feel that Headstone South needed a low traffic neighbourhood? I used to live in a low traffic neighbourhood before I moved to Harrow, so I know what I'm missing. Put simply, you get much reduced levels of traffic and therefore safer and quieter streets with more pedestrians and cyclists. Absolutely, there is a trade-off. You sacrifice convenience when you drive to achieve this. Indeed, arguably these schemes only work because they make driving for short distances less convenient. Otherwise, why would anyone ever walk or cycle? And it's not just me. Here are some of the reasons given by other residents to explain why they signed my original petition. There's just a crazy number of cars buzzing up and down these roads constantly, primarily to avoid traffic lights on the main roads. It's not safe for my kids to cycle. I would love to cycle more, but it feels very dangerous and the cars treat you very, very aggressively. The traffic on these minor roads makes them really unpleasant for residents and pedestrians. So we all want to walk and cycle. We want our kids to walk and cycle. Harrow Council wants us all to walk and cycle, but I'll say it again. Frankly, why would we ever do this when there isn't a welcoming and safe environment for doing so. However, there is now some good news for the petitioners. Some LTN trials are now underway in Harrow. However, many other LTNs are going in across London at the same time, which has generated some press and unfortunately also perpetuated misconceptions about these schemes. Quite a few were perpetuated in the last instance of this very TARSAT meeting. In addition, as we heard earlier, there has not been very clear messaging to residents that one of the short-term impacts of LTN implementations is traffic disruptions that is very likely to self-resolve in the medium to long term. To combat this, I therefore believe what myself and other residents would really like to see from Harrow Council is a greater degree of openness and transparency about these trials. For example, I was asked multiple different, sorry, I was asked by multiple different people what the definition of success was for the Headstone South trial. To find out the answer, I had to submit a formal question to a council committee, then I had to go and pass on the response to all the people who had asked the question individually in different forums. This is a very roundabout way of finding out something so fundamental. Perhaps instead of this, the council would consider using the consultation website to set out some factual information about these types of schemes and how they support Harrow's strategic goals, as set out in the local implementation plan, of improving health, reducing congestion, improving air quality, and also setting out why it is so important that the trials are of six months duration. If it is Harrow Council's ambition to do more of these trial schemes in the future, and I sincerely hope it is, I really feel it is worth the time and effort to put something like this together. Each of the schemes will be unique, but the underlying rationale is unlikely to change. I'd like to finish by thanking the councils and officers who have worked so hard to make these trials happen. Myself and the other Headstone South petition signatories are delighted with this opportunity opportunity to try out walking and cycling for local journeys and we really look forward to seeing how things progress over the coming weeks and months of the trial. Thank you very much for your time. I'll now hand over to Tara Furlong. Hi there, um, it's great that there's the motivation for an investment in cycling and walking routes. My children and I walk, run and cycle for health and practical reasons in the borough 
be out in clean air to exercise for mental health, leisure and to commute. It's great that there are cycle lanes in Harrow, that the London Cycle Network passes through and that there are many considerate drivers and other users. However, while it's safer cycling in groups, including with children than as an individual, children and adults are often learning to navigate the routes and it can be intimidating, even with care and guidance. Cyclists do put their flesh on the line. In Harrow, cars overtake within inches and too fast, even on quiet roads and even with children. This makes cyclists, especially children and inexperienced riders, wobble. Cyclists can't accelerate or brake as fast as cars. We have slower response times and we're much slower on hills, even slight inclines. We wobble out from the curb and gutter, from potholes, cars, or just because we sometimes wobble. Cycle lanes can be brilliant, but in Harrow, cars are often on them, parked or moving. Pedestrians are on them, even children on trainer wheels, which is good training for them, but they may be going so slowly that a standard cyclist can't stay upright behind them or pass. In Harrow, cycle lanes stop suddenly. They just disappear, leaving you in unexpected conflict with cars and other route users. Do you go under a car or crash into a pedestrian? Cycle lanes may well be necessary on main roads, but breathing deeply, noxious fumes, is not ideal. Our lungs benefit from green routes and back roads. It keeps us healthy and is more pleasant. Cycle lanes are important, but if they're not well planned, they may add very little value. My children cycle to school and for leisure, as do I, and for work and health benefits. My children have had close scrapes, even under my watchful eye. In London, I've been hit by drivers playing chicken with me and drivers making sudden right-hand turns, damaging me and my bike. One of my brothers was knocked off his bike on a roundabout locally, damaging him and his bike. My other brother came off his bike, hitting a blind obstacle in the gutter when his attention was caught by a car. He's an experienced commuter and ended up with a broken elbow and weeks off work. My sister simply doesn't cycle. That's just my siblings and I, and I as, as experienced London cyclists. Cyclists do put their flesh on the line. There are many considerate responsible route users, but cycling is hazardous. For the benefits of cycling to be gained, routes need to be made safer and pleasanter. As a school governor, we are very aware of parents parking up on curbs, curbs and around the school, putting little people at risk as they are not visible. Children will run on to school or out. Cars are a hazard for cyclists and pedestrians, but parents choose them for safety and comfort. We need to break this link to make people safer and healthier walking and cycling. With what I outline above, would you choose to walk and cycle with your children or recommend it for other vulnerable users? Veronica. Thank you very much, Tara. So uh, I'm a cycle ride leader and since 2013, I've led almost 300 rides around Harrow with about 1500 people, including people of the BAME communities, that's women, uh, women with disabilities, elderly women, young children. And what they tell me above all is people would cycle more if it was safe. The main barriers to cycling are the design of the roads and driver behaviour. So those are the things we need to tackle. Now Harrow's activities to date have given the illusion of doing something and spending lots of money without tackling the real barriers to cycling. The emperor has no clothes. In 2013, Harrow's vision for cycling in Harrow aimed to increase the modal share of cycling in the borough and to make Harrow a safer place to cycle. But there was no target. And the lip only refers to the 2041 target, which is much too far away to be at all meaningful. We would respectfully suggest to you, to this panel, that you need smart objectives, otherwise you will never achieve them and nothing will change. Harrow has lost out on funding opportunities. Twice the Wheelstone Liverpool neighbourhood was turned down. The expertise of Harrow cyclists wasn't used. The goodwill to all junction changes didn't incorporate anything for cycling. We think that the um, planning gain should prioritise walking and cycling improvements in order to be effective, because that is a key source of funds. Harrow cyclists also advised against wasting thousands and hundreds of thousands of pounds on quiet ways, which is basically a rebadging exercise, sending cyclists down indirect routes. Unsurprisingly, they're hardly used. Officers recently submitted a bid for a cycle route from South Harrow to the town centre without consulting South Harrow cyclists. We don't know whether it's going to be effective or not. Our expertise wasn't valued or used. More money could be wasted. 
Looking at street space, which we generally support, the cycle lanes along dual carriageways finish short of the junctions. As part of your review process, we would ask you to make sure that they are joined up at each end with safe access to junctions and safe infrastructure. Now, the word that infuriates most cyclists most about um, cycle plans is encouraging. It's almost as if if you spend money on encouraging people to cycle, miraculously driver behaviour will improve and the roads will become safe. Really? If you ask cyclists what would get more people cycling, it isn't fun events in parks, it's safe direct cycle routes and better driver behaviour. So why would you waste time not addressing these top priorities? So please, panel, give the Emperor some clothes. Harrow needs a strategic overview of the Burroughs Road network. Which roads are the desire lines and need cycle lanes? Which junctions need to be made safe for cycling and walking? How and to minimise cycle wait times and where low traffic neighbourhoods are needed? We also need support measures such as cycle parking at destinations, cycle hangers in areas of flats, and driver education on safe driving around cyclists. With a strategic plan, officers can engage the community and implement the plan, plan as funding becomes available. Chair, thank you for your time and the panel's attention. Great. Thank you, Veronica, and your, your colleagues for the presentation. Um, the Members of the panel can ask questions if they wish. Uh, you, you have a maximum of 10 minutes. Does anybody want to ask any questions at all? Anybody? I think somebody's trying. James, I think you're. you're uh, I don't have any questions to ask, but I'm happy to make a comment. Um, which I think is fair enough to make. Um, yeah, I've, I've been very clear in other TARSAT meetings um, of the need to make junctions safe and have asked for reviews and I've been assured that they are being reviewed every month to make sure that the junctions are safe. So I hope that work continues on because um, that's where a lot of drivers have also um, raised concerns is on the junctions of the new cycle lanes. Um, I've also put forward the, uh, that we need to have a strategic review of the cycle lanes and where we place them. And I agree if there isn't consultation with um, key stakeholders such as cycle, your cycle group, then I would love it for um, you guys to be involved. So um, I just put it forward to the portfolio holder um, to make sure there is more involvement with the uh, wider cycle community. Um, those are comments to make. I don't have any really questions to to put forward because I think you made yourselves very clear. Thank you. Right. Thanks, James. Uh, Karima, have you, you got a question? I think um, you, you got your hand up, Karima. Yeah, not a question. It's uh, really I'm very impressed uh, because I think you make it greener and healthier environment will make everybody healthy. Living standards will come very high. But only thing is, I think the cycle lessons has to be taught in schools as well as to the community because it is a very because the roads are not broad enough in Harrow and the vehicles are a lot in the road now. Every house has two or three cars down, so it has to be some kind of a strategic plan to go forward in this project work, which I'm really, really happy to meet these ladies who are uh, women, particularly, which I'm proud of it. and. Uh, Right, great. Uh, okay. Are there any more? Veronica, do you want to come in? I think you need to put. Thank you, you Chair. Put, yeah. I'm not sure it, whether it's really a question or a comment, but um, I just wanted to respond a little bit on what's been said. Um, yeah. The first thing is to say that um, junction for a junction to be safe, as Councillor Lee has suggested on something like the junction between King George V Avenue and the Axbridge Road, it would need a cycle lane round it. We don't have that at the moment, and it is really, really important that cyclists should have priority over those junctions um, and give way. And the same would be true, for example, on Axbridge Road and Courtney Avenue. Um, so, but thank you, uh, Councillor Lee, for your support. Right. Okay. Um, and thank you very much, Councillor Marikar. Um, 
we would love to have you on a breeze ride. We have breeze rides <laughs> for women at frequent intervals and we would very much welcome you to come along. I'm happy um, to join. Good. OK, yeah. we'll look for breeze on the website and you can find Thank our you. rides. Thank you. Um, cycle lessons. Yeah, absolutely agree that children need to learn to cycle. But if your child comes home from school and says, oh, can I cycle to school now? Most parents would say no. And until parents can say yes, yes, it's safe to cycle to school. <laughs> You know, frankly, bikeability training is almost a waste of money um, because if they can't cycle except on holiday and in the parks, it really isn't worth it. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Are there any more questions or comments at all? Right. Well, in that case, thanks very much again, Veronica and your colleagues for the presentation tonight. And thank those members or ask questions. Um, I'm glad you support the strategic cycling schemes on the streets based program. Although uh, I, I think we obviously need to do more in Harrow regarding cyclists, but I, I hope we'll be able to work with the Harrow cycling group and other local cycling groups to make sure we do the right thing and proceed with the uh, cycling in Harrow. Right, thank you very much. Um, the street face scheme will be uh, under item 11 but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that uh, shortly right okay thanks again for that um, can we move on to the second deputation and, uh, welcome back in in mandel uh, going to speak to us for parking barriers at honeypot lane uh, again in you have up to 10 minutes and uh, there will be up to 10 minutes for uh, questions from members of the panel. Right, Ian, Ian. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to address you. Um, I'm appealing to you to remove the barriers in front of the shops at the top end of Honeypot Lane. They have totally killed business on our parade. For instance, there is nowhere to park. One of my customers received a parking ticket today for parking on the corner of the road. There was nowhere else for him to park to come into me. The pavements are eight foot five inches wide. There is no foot footfall along our parade. In your notice to the shops, um, which is the Harrow Street Spaces scheme, uh, you state that the measures are located outside shops with narrower footways where there is higher footfall. Where? I mean, eight foot five inches wide pavements is absolutely wide enough. And you have also stated that we have seen an increase in pedestrian numbers. Well, I don't know who's looking at our parade, but there's at least three shops with CCTV and they can show you the, that there is no footfall. Um, I don't know where you got your facts from. Um, the barriers are not put up to protect the public from COVID, but to make money for the council. At the last TARSAT meeting, the councillors voted to remove the barriers. Please tell me who's making decisions there? You voted to remove them and someone else has gone over your heads and said, no, leave them. You don't do not own businesses along that parade that rely on the public and they are just going out of business. We are desperate to have the barriers removed. Otherwise, at least four shops are going to close once this furlough scheme ends. Um, I've noticed that Edgware and Barnet have now taken away their barriers. Um, there are no barriers at Stanmore. There are no barriers at Cannons Park, which are very busy centres. There is enough, more than enough space for people to pass outside our shops um, because of the width of the pavement. But no one can come and visit us because there is no parking. I'm asking you, please, to remove the barriers to help the shops to survive. Um, you are supposed to be helping businesses to survive, not kill them. Another thing that I've noticed the last few days, um, cycle lanes. 
outside our shop, the cycle lane comes more or less to an end going towards the traffic lights at the junction with Marsh Lane. But there are cones um, down the uh, white lines. There have been emergency vehicles, fire, police and ambulance, which have had to go on the wrong side of Honeypot Lane because the traffic is stationary and they just cannot get through. So they've all taken to going on the wrong side of Honeypot Lane. And the other thing that's been a cause of problem is that the service road outside our shop, cars coming up Honeypot Lane see the traffic lights going red. They immediately skip into our service road as a cut through, but do not slow down. We've already had a couple of people knocked down there. I've asked before about humps at the beginning to make them slow, but I was told that they can't do it because the noise to the flats upstairs would be unacceptable. Um, that's basically what I've got to say. I'm pleading with you to sort this out because it's going to cause absolute grief with a number of shops along there. And I don't think that was the um, intention of the barriers. Um, you're welcome to come down and see at least three shots with CCTV, and you can probably count on one hand how many people are going down the pavement. It's just a total waste of time. Um, Chair, thank you for your time. And I hope you can, uh, well, you made the decision last time to remove them. I hope you can do the same this time and that you can make it work. Thank you. OK, right. thanks very much, Ian. Um, uh, I'll move to ask m members of the panel uh, who've got any questions, but can I just clarify that all the uh, pedestrian space schemes are re reviewed monthly by the corporate director of community and if I'm a portfolio holder, so we don't have the ultimate power to remove barriers, but obviously we can um, uh, we can pass on any concerns that you have uh, to the officers who do the reviews on a monthly basis. Uh, right, can I ask if any members of the panel have any questions for uh, Mr Mandela too? Uh, I, I, I mean, first, then John. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Mr. Mandel, for taking the time to join us today. Um, as you are aware, TASAP, as a panel, did vote to have this scheme dropped at our special meeting in August, but unfortunately, um, without any of our consent, it was pushed through. The reason given for allowing this scheme to go through was due to concerns, and we quote, about maintaining acceptable health and safety during the health crisis. Do you think on that basis that is being um, maintained and is necessary? Um, and I would like to again raise to the chair that um, pa this panel does have a say in having this these panels um, removed. As Mr Mandel said, uh, it defeats the whole point of why we were putting in uh, these barriers and I think no one on this panel would like um, to have businesses affected and killed off in this way so I'm sure we'll have the support of all the panel again to make a similar recommendation but Mr Mandel if you could maybe from a daily perspective just outline whether on that basis it's had any impact on the health and safety. None at all I mean the pavements are eight foot five um, the only time we see people are the children going to the school up the road and I was particularly watching at about 3 30 this afternoon and there was about 10 12 of them all huddled together on the pavement laughing and joking and cuddling one another and walking down the pavement no social distancing whatsoever and the few people um, we have a health center three doors away from us people are finding it very difficult to go there because there is nowhere for them to park 
they are having to park in the middle of the road and help people get out of the cars and using frames or wheelchairs to walk from the service road into the health centre. An ambulance tried to get in there the other day, couldn't get in, just could not get in. It's, it's a total nonsense. If it were to benefit health and safety, I would say yes, leave them. But it doesn't. It has, it's serving no useful purpose whatsoever. And if we've got uh, barriers, why hasn't Stanmore? Why hasn't Canada's Park? The footfall in Stanmore is massive compared with us. And Cannes Park, you've got everyone walking towards the station in the morning. No barriers there. I just do not understand. Okay. Um, right. Can I take John next then? And John, please. John, do you want to put your phone on? John. John. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Landell, for coming back, and thank you, Chair, for reminding me to switch on. I remember well uh, the August the 10th meeting, and certainly the TASAP uh, agreed after a long meeting that this scheme should not go through. Unfortunately, uh, the TASAP is an advisory panel, and the advice was uh, taken. I mean, one hesitates to mention the name of the person um, in public who met made that decision, but we all know who who he is. But I believe you have the advantage. You have the advantage that the leader, Councillor Henson, is going to make contact with you. Well, I believe he, he hasn't made contact yet. He said no, he was going to. He promised me last week to call me, but I'm still waiting. Um, is your phone in good order? Have you yeah. tried to phone him? I do, I do not have his phone number. My phone is here and it is on 24 7 as I have a 102 year old mother and it has to be on for in case the care is. <laughs> right. Well, then I think that certainly we would take make every attempt to connect you with Councillor Henson because he is the leader of the council can possibly see through this. Uh, I'm trying to find a polite word for this. Um, this lack of cohesion in in uh, in uh, going forward and I, we on uh, we on the conservative side are going to work our hardest to ensure that you and your fellow shopkeepers um continue thank you very I, much i can think of many words but not polite well we'll be and, and, and john thank you chair um some of the questions has already been uh, uh, asked. So I will just ask, um, uh, Mr. Mandel, um, yes. uh, as John has already asked you, that um, you already have uh, evidence and um, uh, how, how much footfall is uh, is happening on your on your on your street, especially uh, having CCTVs. And I think that was one of the reason that the council leader, Mr. Henson, Councillor Henson, was going to call you. Um, but we understand he hasn't, but I'm sure uh, that he will. And I'm sure you will uh, speak to him and assure him uh, that the evidence that we are getting from the officers are uh, not exactly the same as what the shopkeepers are seeing. So we really want to get to the bottom of that is what I would like to see. Well, yeah. if Daksha can send me his phone number, I will happily phone him. Right. right. And the oh, other oh, other thing oh, is, um, sorry, uh, sorry okay. Councillor, if I could interject here, um, I think I advised Mr. Mandel to t uh, email Councillor Henson I yesterday, did. Uh, I but did. that's fine. I can pass your telephone number to him. Thank you. I did. Uh, I, yeah, I, I got a reply from his secretary to say that the message has been passed on, but that is a week now since we last spoke. OK, right. Chair, I haven't finished yet. Um, yeah. uh, okay. uh, Chair, um, I also wanted to, a clarification on it that uh, this committee, especially the advisory committee, is the one who actually make 
um, the uh, some of the recommendation and, and, and decisions and then pass it on um, to be implemented. Um, is it correct? That's what I understand. So obviously this is an important committee which actually listens to people like Mr. Mandel and others uh, we have already listened to and then recommend and put some uh, uh, proposal forward, which hopefully we think that they will take on board. Well, we are an advisory panel, so anything we put forward has to be agreed by uh, Councillor Palmer, who is the environment portfolio holder. But as far as the streets, <coughs> street space programme is concerned, it, everything's being reviewed on a monthly basis by Councillor Palmer and also by Paul Walker, the corporate director of, of community. So anything we put forward or suggest or recommend will be uh, looked at by those two people. Okay. Thank you. That is that is very good. I, am, I, I welcome that. But we find a lot of discrepancies between what the um, shopkeepers are saying and the figures that we are receiving. And that All is right. where my concerns are. OK, well, first, can I do two things? Are there any more questions or, or comments at all? Or anybody? Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to do something. Uh, Ian. Sorry, Chair. Um, sorry, Chair, it's Daksha Gilani. I think Anup Shah has got his hand up. Uh, I, I, I can't see him, but yeah, OK, right. Um, well, Ian, do you want to come back and then very and quickly, then. very quickly at the meeting last week, um, Mrs. Palmer, um, who has the brief, um, was reading from this Harrow Street Spaces program mm. almost verbatim without any knowledge of what is going on on our parade. I mm. mean, she read off higher footfall, seen an increase in pedestrian numbers. What planet does she live on? All right, that was very useful. Uh, Anu, do you want to come? Can in I time? actually ask a question, Chair? Who is actually no. allowed to ask questions on on this um, on this panel to um, somebody like um, you know the, the uh, well, residents? Anu, Anu is a, a, a advisory member of the panel, so Anu, do you want to ask a question or a comment? Uh, just, just to make a comment. Um, that the, the Honeypot Lane cycle lanes, even though they're a temporary scheme, they are they are useful and they are being used by by people cycling. Um, but the uh, that motorists do use that service road at the end of Honeypot Lane uh, to bypass the traffic lights, and that's quite dangerous. So a future a future solution where we um, should include. Uh, a permanent provision for for cycle lanes and and also better better pedestrian provision, better better footways, so that we can encourage people to enjoy walking in the area and to prevent um, prevent motorists from from carrying out these dangerous manoeuvres. Thanks. Right. Okay. Thanks, Anu. Right. Is there anybody else who wants to? Can ask? I? Oh, can I make? Can I make one suggestion? Having lived around that area since 1950, uh, 1951, there is a simple answer, and that is to reverse the flow in that service road so that they have to go to the lights and turn left and then left again to get back into our service road. Therefore, the cars racing up Honeypot Lane are faced with a no entry sign which makes them go to the traffic lights. That would okay. cut everything out. All right, thanks very much for that, Ian. Uh, right, I want to ask the officers something, but before I do that, um, is there any other questions or comments on the de deputation from uh, Ian at all? No? OK. Um, can I ask David or Barry about the footfall in that area. Uh, have you got any information on that at all, please? Uh, David Gorsham here. Um, as with all the pedestrian space sites, we are monitoring the footfall monthly and we do, we do a sort of seven till seven um, 
video survey, one on a weekday, one on a weekend. Um, it's done by our traffic survey uh, consultants and they provide us with the data. Um, as far as the footfall is concerned, um, Honeypot Lane probably has a smaller level of footfall compared with the other um, locations. Um, we don't have, unfortunately, information about the, uh, the footfall prior to COVID. So we haven't got a direct comparison between what we're monitoring now and what took place previously, but we are monitoring the changes that occur month by month um, in relation to um, the uh, changes in government regulations. Um, one thing I will add, if you'll allow me to share, is um, obviously there's a lot of discussion. I've heard what Mr Mandel said about parking. Um, one of the things that we're suggesting to the portfolio holder is to um, put some uh, temporary parking provision, uh, controlled parking provision, like it, the, the uh, parking that was taken out with the barriers, on the other side of the service road to replicate what was there previously. So that, that would provide some relief um, for customer parking or, or resident parking, because we're aware that there are there are issues now that the uh, parking enforcement regime is being uh, um, brought back to normal this month. So that is being proposed as a potential uh, way of offering some relief to the local businesses. So I thought it would be worthwhile mentioning that as, as Mr Mandel was on, on the call. Uh, thank you, Chair. Right, thanks. Right, if there's no further comment then, um, I think two things. Obviously, I'm hoping that uh, the leader of the council will contact uh, Ian to speak to him about that. And I think we need to convey the concerns of the businesses in that area to the portfolio holder. And also, I think we need to be aware of what David has just said about potential parking improvements to the area that will make it a bit easier to park there and help the shops as well. So the people agree with that? Yeah, is that OK? Right, OK, thank you very much. Again, Ian, for speaking to us this evening. All right, um, if we can then move on then. Um, I think the deputations refer to the next two items, which is item nine. No, sorry, item 10 is transmission, uh, trans transformation schemes, development and implementation proposals, and also item 11, information reports on traffic and parking schemes, uh, and that includes a section on the street space program. So, so David, can you uh, briefly talk to us about the transportation schemes, please? David, sorry, sorry, Chair. Which um, which <laughs> report do you want me to um to introduce? Uh, I, I think you you're, you were doing uh, item ten. Yes, this is the one about procedures. Yes, okay, yes. okay. I'll introduce the report. Um, <clears throat> so I don't need to remind the panel. Um, I'm not going to do item nine because I come here to backbench. Or have you just left it out then? Okay. Uh, Councillor Miles, your mic is um switched off. Sorry. Sorry. Uh yeah, um the deputations refer to item ten and eleven, and we normally take those straight after the, the deputation. So as I said, at the start of the meeting, item nine will be at the last meeting on on, on the agenda which would be the information reports, uh, <coughs> uh, petitions, I'm, I'm afraid. All right, um, it won't uh, take that long. Right, okay, David, sure. you wanna... yeah, Shall I continue? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, right, so item 10, this is to do with the um, procedures used in developing and um, promoting uh, transportation schemes. Um, as you'll recall from uh, the last special meeting, there was a lot of dialogue around the street spaces program. Uh, and as part of the recommendations that went to 
uh, the deputy leader for decision here, it was recommended that um, we review our processes. Um, so this report provides you with um, a fairly detailed uh, explanation of what our processes are um, and whether we need to make any changes, you know, learning from the street spaces program. So the, the first thing, which is around how schemes are developed and promoted, um, the one thing that dictates the types of schemes that we produce is the mayor's transport strategy. So the mayor for London is the person that dictates transport strategy across London. And under the Greater London Authority Act, um, the London boroughs are supposed to support the mayor in delivering his transport strategy. And we do that through our transport local implementation plan. So our LIP, as we call it, basically indicates our policies and our programmes for delivering the mayor's transport strategy in Harrow. And so the types of schemes that we promote and have to comply with our LIP and the mayor's transport strategy. So really, in terms of making any changes to the way that we promote schemes, there isn't really um, anything that we can do because we're tied into a legal, legally binding framework. We have some flexibility locally to d dictate a harrow um, trend towards the projects, but the underlying mayor tra transport strategies are those of the mayor. Then we look into um, the way in which we develop programmes. Um, so I think it's fair to say that um, the street space program is a fairly unique set of circumstances. I would say that the, the way that um, historically we have developed programmes has generally um, been accepted by officers and the panel as being fairly robust. There's usually plenty of opportunity to engage with members, uh, undertake consultation, reconsult on things if we need to reconsult on them. And I think that the key difference about between normal and the street space program is time. We were put under a lot of pressure to deliver on very, very short time scales. Um, we introduced um, different processes to try to deliver schemes quickly, and that clearly caused all sorts of problems. There's no getting away from that. But does that mean that we need to change our processes for our procedure, which is, you know, for no business as normal programmes? I don't think it does. I've looked through it very, very carefully. What I have done is in the appendices, I've actually set out what the process is. So it's fairly, fairly um, clear for everybody to see. Uh, that you'll find that in Appendix C and there's a five step process there which uh, takes you through engaging with stakeholders, undertaking design, um, again making sure that stakeholders are involved with that, undertaking public consultation using all the um, normal processes that you're familiar with, statutory consultation being the next step in terms of dealing with our legal obligations under uh, Road Traffic Regulation Act, and then undertaking implementation and monitoring to make sure that we understand the impacts of schemes that we put in. So um, the only thing that I really need to clarify there, I suppose that the one thing that we've learned is that um, there's a clear difference between doing consultation using the council's website, whereby it's very, very formal. You know, you um, people provide their name and their details and their information which is very, very different to the engagement portal where people don't identify themselves, but they um, are able to share uh, their responses and you get a community view. And I think it's important that we make sure there's a distinction between engagement portals being used for um, getting people's feelings about early concepts about schemes and public consultation, which is really sort of seeking people's views on firm proposals and you know, leading towards uh, somebody making a decision as to what happens with the scheme. So that that is made clear within the report. The final thing that I want to really say um, really concerns um, the fact that we're always delivering a program fully within year. Now, if you think about a single project and how long it takes from start to finish, 12 months, well, normally, you know, it's a it's a quite a a tight timescale to deliver. 
you got to design it, you got to consult on it, you got to engage, you might need to change the project, and then you got to deliver it. And then if you do that with 30 or 40 projects in a year, you clearly have a lot of problems trying to uh, make sure that's all delivered um, to a high standard, to high quality. And so what's suggested in the report is that um, we adopt what a lot of other boroughs are doing, which is to take a two step process is to develop the schemes and consult on the schemes in one year up to approval point and then have them ready for delivery in the following year. And that means you've got more time to develop the schemes properly, resolve issues. And when you come to the point of delivery, you know you have a scheme that's um, uh, going to have less problems. And we, we need to shift the way in which we organise our work so that we can um, always have schemes for development and schemes for implementation in any given year. So those are the, the recommendations that we're making in this report. So thank you, Chair. I'm open to questions. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks very much, David. Do people have any questions or, or comments? To No, sorry, just, uh, and John. Just very quick, just, just very one quick question. Um, when you say that it is, uh, it is the the mayor's um, uh, policy, and it is uh, the mayor that want us to implement this, um, whatever he wants, however he wants um, to uh, do in in our streets. But hopefully, with uh, the consultation program and whatever we are legally bound by to consult our residents at the end of the day it is what the residents want will happen and not what we are directed to do by the by the um, uh, uh, mayor of london and tfl uh, just a little clarification on that please thank you uh yes councillor patel what, what i would say is what the the mayor sets the transport strategy that means he sets the policies yeah. Yeah. Um, it's down to the boroughs to do the local delivery. So if we're if we're promoting a scheme um, that aligns with the mayor's strategy and then there's opposition to that proposal, then it's still within the gift of uh, the council to choose not to deliver that particular project. My my main, um, the, ex the thing I was trying to explain is that the mayor sets the basic strategy for London. That's all I was trying to say. Thank you. That, thank thank you. you for that clarification. I understand that now because I think not because his strategy, um, he can set the strategy, but not every borough is the same. So I was a bit worried. Thank you for clarification. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, Amy, have you got a question? Thank you, um, David, for that report. Um, my question was around um, 2.29 um, about consultation during the COVID process. You know, we've heard from residents today, um, especially Mr. Mandel from Honeypot Lane, that this you know consultation at the time was difficult. But the recommendations don't really say much about um, once schemes have been implemented and, and <coughs> residents are still continuing to object to the scheme. You know, what more can we as a panel do to um, uh, undo? those things because you know schemes across the borough residents are still unhappy and um, there should be a st structure in place to ensure that we can um, get um, those schemes revoked. Okay thank you for that. Um, what I would say is that we in Harrow I would say that when it comes to implementing a review process uh, we've probably taken quite a lead in London in terms of how we do that because we have a monthly review. Um, we have powers delegated to the portfolio holder to make decisions. Um, and it is actually, you know, from, from, from the office pers officer's perspective, you know, it's not like we've developed the schemes and just left them there. They're, we're going through an ongoing process of reviewing them in some detail and making changes whenever we need to. So every single scheme, if you think about it, there's over 20 of them being reviewed every month with you know, the option of removing them if they're completely unsuccessful or amending them if we think there's ways of improving you know, or dealing with problems. I think that the process uh, there is uh, is very well. You will see that it's very effective. Um, as I said you know, earlier, when uh, Mr Mandel was on the line, you know, we're already developing some ideas to try to help 
with um, the problems that businesses are experiencing. And you will, if you've read, you know, there is an appendix to the next, one of the next items about the pedestrian space review where you can see that we undertook a business engagement survey with many of the businesses affected and we're acting, trying to act on a lot of the feedback that they provided us with. So I actually think that we're doing at the moment more now to try to address their concerns and and to really sort of yeah you know, look at the sort of things that you're you're suggesting. They might not be picked up in this report directly because that is talking about the broader procedure. But in terms of you know, what we're doing about these street space schemes once they're in, there is a very effective review process uh, developing now, and we intend to try to you know make that work as as well as we can. Right, thanks. Are there any more questions or comments at all? No. Right. Okay, Chair, so can we, uh, Councillor Chair, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Anup Shah has his hands raised. Oh, I, I can't see him from here, but so yes. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, uh, Anup, sorry, I, I, I can't see you at the moment. Uh, Anup, yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I uh, agree wholeheartedly with the the proposal to to develop schemes in advance and consult them in advance uh, rather than waiting for funding to to be available and trying to rush things. And I would also suggest that um, that there needs to be a, a a strategic overview of what what the road network would ideally be look like, what where low traffic neighbourhoods are going to be needed across the borough. Because we know that there are certain areas where there's more public support than than others. So implementation could be prioritised in the areas which have more support initially, but we do need to have an, an overview so that uh, so that future road schemes can incorporate incorporate what's needed. And also, I would suggest that you probably need a a larger permanent traffic engineering team because a lot of the work is outsourced to consultants who don't really know the borough. I think it's 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 important to have this. Uh, sort of this ongoing strategic improvements and so you, uh, you can have long lasting improvements. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Right. Are there any further comments or questions? Uh, and Joanna, uh, again. Um, thank you, Chair. Can I just quickly ask? Um, because a lot of residents did actually leave um, a lot of uh, comments and, and uh, on their feedback during the two weeks of consultation of this uh, 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 low uh, traffic neighborhood schemes, but it looks like some are picked up and some are not. So I think we also need to look at our own um, uh, our own uh, council uh, portal. Why, why is it so that only some are picked up and some are not? That is one thing. The second thing is, um, I uh, I'm glad uh, David said that we are we have obviously uh, doing more than other boroughs are doing, which is uh, good to hear. Uh, but one of the the comments that I have received from the residents of Stratfield Road is that they were only given one hour to fill in the form, um, all the businesses, and then somebody was going to go around and pick them up. Now I don't think that is a right type of consultation. Um, that we are doing or or feedback that we would we would ask uh, from the from the businesses. First of all, they have got that business hour. They are actually working very hard during the business hour and then asking them to fill in the form within an hour is uh, is outrageous as far as I'm concerned. I'm not too sure, but if that is correct or incorrect, if you will please get back to us on that. Thank you. Thanks, Anjana. David, any comments on on that at all? Okay, well, yeah, the um, the business engagement survey was actually done by our economic development team, and what they did because they do have quite good relations, you know, that's part of their role with the local businesses. They actually went round um, in person and met with people to talk through um, the survey. So um, it wasn't that they were left with a form and you know, just fill it. It was. They were actually doing it in person and discussing it with them and and getting the feedback, which um, in their experience has been a very, very good way of getting to you know, get the feeling of how people um, are responding to the to the survey. So, I mean, you know, 
when it comes to dealing with the businesses, our, our economic development team are, uh, are quite good. They have quite good linkages. <laughs> So we, and we did that specifically because we wanted to make sure that the feedback that we got was you know, useful, relevant and gave us an idea of how they were feeling. Um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Right. OK, are there any more questions or, or comments? Um, I think Tony Wood, do you want to? Tony? Tony? I think he had a question, but I... Tony. Oh. Do you want to turn your... Uh, Tony. Uh, right. Oh, good man. I've got grave concerns about the, some of these cycle schemes and the effect that they have on bus services, um, particularly Sheepcoat Road, where I believe, and so do many others, that the inside lane should be for buses and cyclists only, and the outside lane should be for the general traffic. Uh, some of the bus drivers are having trouble when they pull into the inside lane to serve a bus stop, being able to get out again into the traffic lane. Also, traffic lane takes all the traffic, except cyclists, and the buses are part of that, and they should not be part of the general traffic flow. They should be the bus lane, because bus lanes allow cyclists to use them, so they still get some benefit. That's my comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. David, should, should yes, um, look, 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 I do. Those two. I, I do completely agree with Tony. Um, we've been um, taking a view that um, in Sheepcote Road in particular, um, it may be far more beneficial to use bus lanes where buses and cycles can share the lanes. Um, um, because we've got a review of the cycle schemes coming up quite soon, we'll be we'll be looking at that, and there may be a, a possible recommendation that we make to the uh, portfolio holder. Thank you very much, David. Right. Thanks, Tony. Are there any more? Sorry. Yeah. Are, are there any more questions or comments at all? No. If not, then if we can agree with the recommendations on page 60 of the agenda. OK, thank you very much. Uh, right. If we can move on to uh, item 11 now, which is the information report on traffic and parking schemes update from 2020-21, but that also includes the street space program as well. I think Barry, Barry. Oh, I'm here, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're here. Well done. Yeah. Just to clarify, sorry, um, Chair, just to clarify, so what, when can the uh, councillor do their backbenching after item 11? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I said at the beginning of the meeting, we, after the deputations, we'll take item 10 and 11, and item 9 will be the information report on petitions. So that will be immediately after Barry has spoken on this item. Is that thank okay? Thank you, Chair. All right, okay. Barry. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, this is um, a regular progress update. It's an information item. It basically explains where we are with our programs. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be fairly brief. Um, we've got two, two main programs uh, at the moment. The first program is our parking program, um, which uh, on Appendix A, you can see the details of where we are with the parking program. Uh, it's ticking along quite nicely. Um, Appendix B um, is the street space program, which effectively replaced our LIP program. Uh, which we've already heard about and we've talked about. So um, normally I'll be reporting on the bus lanes and cycle lanes and 20 mile hour zones, but um, that program has been replaced by the street space program. Now. So Appendix B gives details of the program. So there are four main areas. There's pedestrian spaces, which we've heard about already tonight. Um, there's nine street spaces altogether in the borough. Um, the main ones, the, main, the four main ones, Honeypot Lane, Kenton Lane, Kenton Road, and Stratford Road, I think we've already discussed in some detail. Um, the other programs we're running at the moment, we've got cycle, the cycle lanes. We've got three temporary cycle lanes at the moment, um, and we're still considering George V. We've got a meeting next week to talk about um, a potential resurrection of that scheme and see if we can come up with a proposal. Um, we've got uh, four streets, school streets, which are operating, uh, Marlborough School, Newton Farm, Grimstein, and, um, and Park High. 
so they're all operating at the moment. Um, and then we've got the load of traffic neighbourhood schemes, which um, have gone in recently. The um, the Headston South scheme only went in. Um, it was actually implemented fully today with the, the planters in place. So we've got West Harrow, which is already in place. Uh, we've got the closure in Southfield Park and we've got Francis Road closure. So effectively, um, that's our programme that we're running at the moment, Jerry. So hopefully there's an overview of, um, of what we're doing. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions from the panel. OK, okay. Uh, I've got to indicate uh, Palmaina first and Jeremy second. Uh, Palmaina and then, then John. Uh, thank you, Chair. My question really is for the record because I've been getting lots of representation from residents across South Harrow, specifically about the site strategic cycling lanes. They haven't seen anything in South Harrow, so my question really is, is there anything planned in the future for South Harrow? Thank you. Um, not, not with our experimental programme because the street space programme, I think that's the funding run out at the end of September, but we are planning to do some other work in and around the area. So we're looking um, at the moment we've got um, potentially the High Street Fund, which we can look at cycle links from South Harrow to, to Harrow. And that's something that we want to want to take forward in the near future. So that is that is a positive step forward. We're also looking at some other cycle routes which will link um, district centres as well. So again, um, it's an exciting uh, programme to be involved in. Um, we're hoping to engage fully with members shortly. So I think that's something that we've just started looking at. So in answer to your question, yes, there are other things that we're looking at strategically to improve cycling. Right. Can I ask a follow up, Chair, if you, uh, can I do that? No. Yeah. No? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Um, my follow-up my follow really quickly was going to be, um, is there any timeline that you can give for residents who might be watching this or who um, will come back with questions on this? Because obviously they're seeing these changes across the borough and I understand that obviously this is a temporary measure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we do want to give reassurance to South Harrow residents that they aren't forgotten in these schemes. Uh, load, uh, you know, the um, the 20 mile per hour zones, all the school schemes, all this strategic cycling, but I've had lots of representations on cycling specifically. So can you potentially give me a timeline or is that not possible at this moment? Well, we're still working with the economic development team, but we're, we're hopeful to start some um, some initial design this, this financial year. So within the next few months. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Jeremy was next. Hi, thanks ever so much, Jerry. Um, thanks to everybody for letting us um, have the opportunity to attend this meeting. My name's Jeremy Leach from London Living Streets. Um, just two points, really. I mean, I just I do want to praise Harrow um, quite significantly for their response to the um, to the Streetscape for London plan, um, and in particular, sort of a really robust cycling network and low traffic neighbourhood programme. I do, I do feel, and perhaps inevitably, I do feel that missing from that is a significant pedestrian improvement scheme. And I do think, you know, I think there's been some minor schemes, but I do think there's a potential in a, you know, in a in a borough as um, as, <coughs> as significant as Harrow for an important sort of pedestrian scheme. So, and, and I perfectly um, pick up on Barry's points of the previous. Um, um, programs were halted, but I would say as we come back into, you know, as we come back into the normal lit program and others, I do feel there's a tremendous set of themes around lower speeds in the borough. And I do think, you know, I do think Harris should really be starting to look at a borough wide, um, a borough, you know, a borough wide default of a 20 mile an hour speed limit. And that would have huge benefits. But, uh, but obviously that needs the lit to come back. The other one I do think is some really significant pedestrian um, benefit schemes, really looking at a town centre such as Harrow, high quality walking routes into there, starting to improve crossing facilities, getting speeds down so that pe pedestrians aren't so intimidated in walking to the town centre shops. So, you know, great work that you've done, but just remember significant pedestrian schemes and also this whole issue of intimidation around speed and 20 mile an hour can start to help that with that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy, for that. Uh, John, did you, did you have a question at all?
Um, I have two questions. The first yeah. one concerns uh, low traffic neighbourhoods, and we've had some very eloquent um, petitions today and people talking about uh, various issues that they have caused. And I just wanted to understand uh, how the <laughs> traffic officers are going to address these concerns, because it seems to me that in the partially unrelated case of Mr. Mandel and Honeypot Lane, um, the officers backfit the information to suit their own purpose. So what are we going to do about that? And the second question uh, concerns um, street uh, school street spaces and in particular Grimsdyke School. And I personally think that the idea of uh, number plate recognition around schools is a first class idea. But what this council has done, it's implemented it, and then it's left the residents to try and cope with all the traffic with no sufficient enforcement. The head teacher of Grimsdyke School, it's not his fault. Well, it probably is his fault that it's an excellent school, but he has had to send out a newsletter to the parents telling them that they really shouldn't react in the way to treble parking, to people doing U-turns in the road, to, to people phoning up and complaining to me and the other councillors that their children are being run over. And we don't see the enforcement. It's all very well having um, these schemes, but there's no point in doing it unless you've got the enforcement um, to um, go with it. So thank you very much, and I do hope that you're going to be able to do something. Well, Barry. Thank you very much. Barry, can you respond to that at all? Those two uh, questions? Yeah, thank you, John. Obviously, I think we've talked about this before. There is a review process going on, and we are listening to what people are telling us. We're getting lots of information from our commonplace portal, which went live the other day. We got lots of information from there. We're getting lots of positive comments as well as negative comments, and we're taking those on board. And as we say, there is a methodology for looking at these these sites. We're looking at that and we're providing the information to um, the corporate director and to Councillor Palmer, who ultimately will make the decisions. But we are mindful of what residents are telling us and we do make note of them. And that's that will be included in our report and our recommendations going forward. In terms of enforcement of school streets, uh, we do have a rota. We are working very closely with our enforcement teams. Uh, we have got one site which is a permanent camera site at the moment, which you know about Park High and Grimm's site. We are expecting the cameras to go live very shortly. I think we're under a lot of pressure to try and get these schemes in off the ground because um, up until very recently we had no school streets in the borough at all. So we've been working very hard over the last two or three months to try and get these schemes in, which might sound like a lot of time, but believe me, it's not a lot of time to get these schemes up and running. So it's all credit to all the people that have been helping me put this programme together. And we have been working with the councillors and yourselves and the community to try and get these schemes to work. Uh, it does take time, you know, we, it takes time to embed these schemes in. Um, the enforcement guys are, uh, we had to get the, the, the actual cars specially modified so that they can record AMPR, which is automatic number plate recognition. Uh, again, getting that off the ground and getting it working and getting the whitelist and getting a website together where people can apply for virtual permits has been a very, very challenging task, which I think um, a lot of people have, have managed to um, put together at very short notice. So I, I do understand your concerns. We are working very hard to make sure that the school streets do work because we've got lots of interest from other schools in the borough, particularly, who are also keen to, to have these measures in place. And if they are successful, then we will certainly like to roll them out across the borough. Um, and we hope that there will be a success in the future by encouraging modal shifts, by, by encouraging more people to walk and cycle and scoot to schools, which is something that obviously uh, would be beneficial health wise to everyone. So, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, uh, Councillor, and um, certainly take on board what you're saying, but we are working very closely with our enforcement team to make sure we can, we can make this a success. Thanks very much. Thanks, John. Thanks, Barry. Uh, Amit next, and, and John. Uh, Amit. Thank you. Um, just a quick question about when the um, LIP scheme 
is um, set if you have any indication of when it will um, be revised, because I know it's temporarily replaced by the Harrow Streets um, Spaces programme, but there are some elements um, that are missed out, such as, you know, um, instantly in double yellow lines, which um, is also uh, a, a sort of cause of concern that the, some, some important schemes are being uh, held back. Um, well, the, the LIP program um, doesn't stop us from doing WL lines. That's, um, we have a, a local safety parking program, which is part of our parking uh, budget, which we have. So any requests we get for WL lines, we will assess that using the criteria, which is already approved by the TARSAT panel. Um, so that is ongoing. So we are still putting in WL lines um, when we can, and as we can. Um, so that's not been affected. In terms of the LIP program itself, um, we're still waiting to hear from Transport for London. Obviously, uh, I think it's well documenting the financial problems that they've been having, and there's been ongoing negotiations with the government to try and get um, some funding, which will allow the boroughs to at least get part of their LIP funding back so we can work on some of our more conventional programmes. Right, okay, great. Uh, thank and John. John. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to um, talk about, as we are on the uh, street spaces, um, I, I totally understand that we've got this um, pandemic going on um, and there is more uh, cases, increasing cases and whatnot. But all I would like to say after listening to Mr. Mandel and I have been around to see the businesses, this Honeypot Lane um, uh, stretch of it, I think we should actually remove the barriers as soon as possible after having so much evidence is what I would suggest at the moment. The second thing is that where it is needed, it is not there. And where in a small parade like this, where there are hardly four, four shops operating or whatever, uh, we are actually putting barriers. So we are actually not looking after our business. We are being hindered uh, to their businesses and they, they're, they're pleading to us about it and we are not doing anything about it. So I would urge um, to recommend uh, to the portfolio holder that we remove those barriers as, as soon as possible. And even the one on Kenton Lane um, are the two that I would I would propose that we should uh, actually remove those two barriers. And obviously, as far as the road closures are concerned, lo uh, low traffic uh, um, neighborhood is concerned. Um, obviously, there are a lot of people who are uh, up in arms about it. Uh, we mustn't forget that at the end of the day, we have to look at our uh, demography. We need to look at our, uh, what kind of people we are serving in this borough and what age group they are and accordingly implement all these schemes. Um, it is very nice uh, when um, some people talk about uh, 20 miles an hour and cycling and which is very good. I would love to have and do all that, but I don't think we can look in at our um, population in, in Harrow because every borough is different. They are not all the same. 20 miles an hour is good enough, maybe for some uh, inner London boroughs, but not borough like ours. That's all I have to say, but I would propose that we actually uh, recommend to take the barriers down Honeypot Lane and Kenton Lane, which is a very, very small parade. I don't know why we did it in the first place and the, the, and, and the payments are, are wide enough. And then obviously on Stratford Road, I would say the same thing. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, well, as we have said before, um, we're looking at the parking in Honeypot Lane. Uh, these decisions are reviewed on a monthly basis by Paul Walker and Varsha Palmer. OK, and um, I think they should be allowed to review it. if we have any concerns or any members have any concerns that they can be passed on uh, as appropriate. Barry, do you, do you have any comments at all? Um, no, I agree, Chair. Obviously, there, there, there is a review process and obviously the comments are very, um, you know, we understand your comments, we understand Mr Man Mandel's concerns uh, and they'll be taken around and the decision be made by um, the powers that be. Right, right. Thank you. Right. Are there any other questions or comments on on uh, any items on this report? Jenny, uh, I would like to speak. If, 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 sorry, who's that? Karima. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't didn't see you there. OK, it's sorry, right. Karima. It's all right. Barry, how are you? I hope you're safe. 
Uh, just to say, I'm talking for the my Western Award. Uh, the peop certain people are very happy with the low trafficking uh, project work which you'll have put in, uh, into West Harrow. But in saying that, I have touched the pulse with everybody. But there is a scheme. I think the consultation has to be thorough before you're going to implement it. So I'm happy certain people in certain roads have written to us personally saying that they are very much interested, very healthy. They could see children are walking and it's good for us. If you change it, you know, they are trying to play politics. They will speak to the conservative councillors. I said it is a project which has put by the London mayor and it's a strategic plan. So I have spoken from length to length that officers are doing what has to be done for the community and we as councillors are working towards it. So there is a good response coming on that. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me to talk. Thank you much, Karina. Right. Are there any other questions or comments on any of these schemes at all? Right, if not, then can we note the information report there? Right, thank you. Um, can we move on to the last item, item nine, petition information report? Um, before we start, um, I think rather than go through go through them all, Barry, um, I, I, I think um, Councillor Ashton uh, would like to backbench on item two. Uh, Marilyn, are you still here? Um, right, yes, sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry, to, yeah. Yeah, sorry to keep okay. it you so long. Um, Barry, um, can you just talk about item two first of all on Dennis Lane Stanmore? Uh, and then uh, I can invite members of the panel, Marilyn, to, to comment on that. Barry. Um, yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, um, this is an information report petition. So uh, number two on the petitions list is Dennis Lane. Um, as members of the panel will be aware, um, this is one of the schemes we did put forward as a low traffic neighbourhood. Um, there was quite, um, I think, quite a lot of negative feedback about the scheme initially. Um, we would normally put a scheme like this through our LIT programme. Um, as we've already talked about, our LIT programmes are now suspended. When we get requests for road closures, we have a set procedure we would go through. We look at all the assessment factors to follow it through and then make a recommendation. But with this particular scheme at the moment, um, uh, we have no funding to, to look at this scheme in great detail, but we understand that the local residents are requesting a road closure at the top of Wood Lane in Dennis Lane. So I think, Chair, yeah, that's where we are with this particular project or this particular petition. Right, uh, okay. If members of the panel haven't got any comments, uh, Marilyn, do you, you want to come in there? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm afraid, um, and, and uh, believe me, I, I get on very well with Barry. He's an excellent officer, so I don't want to contradict him or anything like that. But I don't think he has quite understood what the original petition was about. And if I may just take the liberty of reading the petition, it's very short. It actually says this. Implement a one way system at the top of Dennis Lane by prohibiting traffic coming down from Wood Lane into Dennis Lane for short distance only, just like what the council implemented recently on Green Lane. We believe this option is effective at the cut down of traffic on Dennis Lane approximately 50% and is cheap to implement. We, the undersigned, agree that the above petition should be acted accordingly as we all care about the negative traffic impact in our road at present. Now, that is really very clear, uh, Chairman. Um, the residents in Dennis Lane do not want their road closed. And uh, when um, this, this uh, street space uh, scheme was suggested um, uh, as a result of, of COVID with, with the, the funding from uh, TfL, um, it was not only to completely shut off the top of Dennis Lane, both for access and egress, which is not what they want, uh, but it was also at the same time to shut off access and egress into Green Lane. Now that is completely different to this. What these residents would like to, to try uh, or, or, or at least have a go at is something similar to that which Green Lane has, and that is that you um, can um, 
exit or um, drive up Dennis Lane and out into Wood Lane at the top, um, in other words, egress, but <coughs> she would not be able to drive in to Dennis Lane from Wood Lane, which is exactly the same as Green Lane. You can't go into Green Lane from Stanmore Hill, but you can egress onto Stanmore Hill, except that it's even more restricted in Green Lane because you can only turn left. Now, the reason why I wanted the back bench is because when I actually read the information document here, in paragraph 2.10, it says an opportunity for a low traffic neighbourhood scheme to address through traffic Dennis Lane had previously been proposed earlier in this year as part of this, the council street space programme. Whilst the proposal involved a full closure of the road and aims to scheme a very similar to what the petitioners are proposing. They're not similar, that's just it. And not only that, the funding for what the petitioners were proposing would have been paid for by the Stanmore Park Ward Council as sales fund. So it wouldn't cost the council any money and the, and the officers know that. So what I'm really saying is, and please forgive me, I want to make it very clear that we as the Stanmore Park councillors expect the council not to ignore this petition, not to ask for another petition, and to take it seriously. It is extant, it is relevant, and it is not the same at all, and not in terms of its funding, which will not cost the council any money, um, and it is not the same in, in terms of the fact that it is not a closure of Dennis Lane at the top end, thereby making the people at the top having to live at the end of a very long cul-de-sac they would be able to leave their road at the top. It's very different and it had a lot more support. And I think it's a shame that frankly, this, this um, information uh, item has been written in the way it has because it's actually quite misleading. So could I request please that we do take Dennis Lane seriously, that we do look at this petition and bearing in mind that we will fund it from our seal funding, and, and have a go at either putting an experimental scheme in or a permanent scheme, whichever. But please don't ignore this petition. And finally, Mr. Uh, Kazis is, uh, is um, somebody who I know did try and speak to you, Chairman. And uh, I, I must say on a personal note, Jerry, I always find you to be a very nice, kind person. And uh, please don't take this the wrong way. But you have mi misrepresented uh, what you said to each other. And I think it's very bad that you didn't let him speak to the committee tonight. Bearing in mind some of the questioners didn't ask their questions. But thank right. you for listening to uh, me, okay. Chair. Right. OK, um, so, so Marilyn, you, you don't want the street space scheme, but you want to do a similar scheme as in no, green, no. Green, 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 green lanes, yeah? As a similar sort of scheme, yes? No, is no, no, no. Well, no, what I'm saying is the street space scheme has been rejected. Yeah, right? yeah. Out, OK, yeah. what the people of Dennis Lane would like the council to seriously consider, and I presented yeah. a petition for them earlier on this year before COVID started, is yeah. that they would like to try and see if it helps them and doesn't inconvenience people too much, have a similar scheme to Green Lane. Green lanes, right, okay. Which right. doesn't involve closing the road completely. No, Because okay. that would be wrong. Okay, all right. Uh, Barry. Um, Barry? Barry? Oh, Jerry, no, I'm back. It's all right. I'm here. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I completely understand. Yeah, effectively, what um, Mr. Kazaz is asking for is a point no entry, which is similar to what you've got in Green Lane. I mean, it's something that yeah, we can talk about, we can consider, so we're not going to. Totally disregard it, but let's have a look at it in more detail. Please forgive me, but it's just when I read this information circular, it did look a bit as if you were saying, right, we didn't want to close the road, so we're just not going to bother. And, that, and, and if that's not the case, I apologise. But I want to make it clear that we need to take this seriously. There is a lot of problems, uh, particularly for the residents in Dennis Lane, I think that, uh, and I can, I think uh, Councillor Jogi will probably testify to this because he has the great pleasure of, of representing just under half the road because it peters out at the top. Yeah. The side of the road at the moment, it won't be in the future, as it so happens, is in Cannons Ward. But we're happy to use our seal funding to fund this scheme, so you don't have to worry about the budget. I don't think it's going to cost a fortune. 
And I think it might be an idea to try an experimental one first, just to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it would help a lot because they've got chickens and they've got a whip restriction. And there isn't an awful lot more we can do for them. And this might help. And I think it would go down a lot better than closing the road all together. Oh, okay, so, Barry, are you willing to speak to put, uh, uh, people who present, present presenting to put petition? And... Well, I'm happy to talk to Mr. Kazan. Go, yeah. go forward, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. you'll find he's so, very nice. He's actually an engineer himself. Oh, no, he's my boss. Well, he is very, very knowledgeable, and right. you know, okay. uh, he's made right. a very valid point. I just want to make sure that we okay. don't. Thank, okay. you. Um, Thank you, Chair. Can I just, uh, if I can just, I think, I think it's David. It's David. Sorry, uh, I should have said who I was. So it, it really is. Um, <laughs> we all understand what what's wanted. Okay, it's really a case of the funding. Um, the situation for us was you when the street. Funding, David, we'll pay for yeah. it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that if you if you want to take forward um, as borough council councillors, you know, ENSIL funding, then make the request to Dave Corby that you would like to do that and we will deal with it in the normal way. I already right. did that. Right. And, and right. not only okay. that, you will know about it. Okay. Right. Okay, that, that, that's fine then. Right. Thank you very All much right. for that. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, my you for letting me speak. Right. Okay. Bye. Right, can we, um, uh, Barry, can you return to the other uh, petitions now and just go, go through them briefly? Barry? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, Joe. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, number one was Furnace Road, it's a request for yellow lines, and that was <laughs> that's that met the criteria. Number three, Whitefriars Avenue, Graham Road, uh, it was objection to the proposed parking amendments. Uh, that was resolved by the PH reports, and that's been that's been decided now. So the scheme is going ahead. Sheepcoat Road, we had a request for speed cameras. Um, Sheepcoat Road doesn't meet the criteria for speed cameras, um, which is set out by the Department of Transport. So we've we've told the lead petitioner that already. West Harrow, there was a request for a low traffic neighbourhood. We heard earlier that West the, the low traffic neighbourhood has gone in now. Uh, Little Common request for speed reduction. Little Common is a private street, so we. If the people there would like to get in touch with us, we might be able to help them to put in a, a scheme to reduce traffic speeds. They actually asked for a 10 mile an hour. You can't have 10 mile an hour. It's got to be 20. That's the minimum. Um, Harrow Street's programs, um, we've, we've talked about that before. We had a number of objections. I think the objections were for two low traffic neighbourhoods, which didn't, didn't eventually go ahead. Um, <coughs> Stretford scheme, which did go ahead. Um, that was resolved some time ago. Wellington Road, we had a request for parking controls. They're going to be included in the CPZ. Honeycott Lane Service Road, remove the pedestrian barriers. We've already heard from Mr Mandel again tonight. I think it's quite clear that you know, people don't like the scheme. Um, Elm Grove Road, request for traffic calming measures. Um, and Hillary Gardens, also a request for traffic calming. Both these schemes we would normally deal with through our LIT programme request for traffic calming, but obviously our LIT programme is now suspended. So we will keep those um, requests on record uh, and we'll try and look at them when LIT funding returns. Jerry, that's it. Um, thank you very much, councillors, for uh, listening to me. And that's the end of this report. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions or comments on the petition report? So, to Barry? Uh, I mean, sorry, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Barry. Um, I'd just like to follow up from what Councillor Angela and Jana Patel raised before on point nine about Honeypot Lane. Is it possible if we can raise a motion, um, my colleagues and I would like to raise a motion to have those um, uh, pedestrian barriers removed, please, um, because we've already had enough evidence um, from Mr Mandel himself um, and elsewhere that uh, scheme is not very popular. Um, so if we could please put a vote to another recommendation. Um, All right. Well, panel, I already said uh, I think the leader of the council was speaking to him. It will be reviewed. We're going to review the parking there. If you want to vote, you can do it. I will vote against me moving the scheme. But do you want to propose a motion? Uh, yes, please. And seconded. Right. OK, so 
Um, if one are either support or uh, uh, be against the motion, I'm, I'm against the motion for the reasons I've just said. Um, <coughs> um, that year, do you want to go through the list again? Councillor Payman Assad. Sorry, can I just ask um, for the motion to be read out word for word? So I know exactly what I'm voting for or against. Councillor um, Jogia, sorry, Councillor Jogia, you, you may correct me, but Ma, the motion I see that you raised is to get pedestrian barriers at Honeypot Lane to be removed. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, can I make it clear? I, I'm against removing them at, at the moment, but if you want to go through the uh, list of members. Councillor Assad. Um, I'm going to vote for removing them because I've heard um, the deputation from the business owner and I think in order to support uh, small businesses in Harrow, um, we should do that. Thank you. Councillor Lee. Councillor Lee. Uh, excuse me, unmuted. I am strongly in favour of the removal of these barriers. Uh, I've put forward the motion first time round and I support it this time round as well. Thank you very much. Councillor Hinckley. I'm strongly in favour of removing the barriers as soon as possible without more delay so that there are some businesses left. OK, Councillors Jogia and Patel, I assume you're in favour of removal because you moved yes. and seconded the motion. Yes, um, I would I would like to say that. Can't hear you, Councillor. Councillor Patel, we can't hear you. I, I, I suggest uh, that uh, uh, there are only about four shops left, so there aren't many shops left in that parade. We don't want to kill all of those businesses, so I recommend that the barriers are removed immediately. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Marika. Councillor Marika. Sorry, Councillor Marika, are you there? <clears throat> I'm with Councillor Jogi. I think I, I it, the barrier should be removed for business okay. purposes. OK, could I just clarify that this will be a recommendation to the portfolio holder? Yes. from the panel and the decision will rest with the portfolio holder for environment. Yes. yes. OK, and and the motion is carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, OK, that, that, that's one. Although, uh, as I said, it's a shame that um, I think the leader of the council is going to speak uh, about this anyway. Um, it's um, we're going to alter the scheme to address parking, so I think it's a, a pre, pre, uh, pre empty move to ask it to be removed. And in any case, the uh, scheme is assessed every month by the portfolio holder and by the and by Paul Walker as well. But uh, obviously, the majority of members wanted to go forward tonight, so I, I accept that. So there we are. Right. Is there any other questions on um, the petitions uh, at all? Any questions or, or, or comments at all? No? Anybody? Sorry, Chair, the report is therefore noted with a recommendation to the portfolio holder for the removal of the barriers at Honeypot Lane. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if there's no question, further question or comment, we just note the information report that the motion will go forward. The sure. Report. Thank you. Right, OK, I think after uh, two and a half hours, we've come to the end of the meeting. Can I thank you very much for your attendance tonight and your comments and your questions. Uh, I think the date of the next meeting is the 2nd of March. So have a Merry Christmas in the interim, I suppose. <laughs>
Right. Merry Thanks Christmas very much, everybody. to you too, right. Chair. To you Merry Christmas, soon. everyone. Right. Stay safe. <laughs> it sounds very early, though, Chair. Yeah, right. To wish everyone yeah, Merry Christmas.